legal situations and that kind of threw you off course. So let everybody kind of know. We want to know the whole yeah, story. Yeah, I got about. locked the fuck up. <laughs> That's what happened. I got charged with some homicides and some bullshit and some more bullshit. Plural. Didn't have shit to do with me. Plural. They didn't have a goddamn thing to do with me. And, um, and it, it put my career to a halt, but sometimes certain things be necessary so you can get something else out of the situation. You know what I'm saying? I'm not I'm not too geeked up on the rapper boy shit. That's cool, but yeah. that's not really my, you know what I'm saying? Like, at the end of the day, I learned something that was valuable. You know what I'm saying? I, I have a chance to get back to that. I'm still active in the music career. I got artists signed to me right now. I got, we putting plays together behind the scenes. You know what I'm saying? So, and I still record when I feel inspired. I still put music out and you know what I'm saying? But of course, I was at my peak, you know what I'm saying? When I left, you know what I mean? I was at a good, a good spot where I was breaking some, yeah, where I was, I was breaking some ground, you know what I'm saying? I think last time I seen you was in Miami. We, Miami. I was working then. Everything happened like a couple weeks later. It was crazy. But basically what you saying, you weren't in the same headspace you in now? I definitely wasn't in the same headspace I'm in now. So, you know what I'm saying? Some shit that be seem like a curse be a blessing in disguise. It's, it be your perspective though, how you, how you look at the shit. You know what I mean? So let's 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 go back to the beginning of the El Dorado Red story, man. When 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 did when did you kind of burst on the scene and, and and start to create that music buzz? What what, what, year, what year was that? Like oh four oh four oh five. I rec I was doing music like in Alabama between you know what I'm saying, doing whatever I was doing in the street, then just recording and fucking around. But I came to Atlanta like. End of 04, 05 with the mall. I came to Atlanta with, with the mall. And so the music thing was always like kind of a dream. You know what I'm saying? Cause niggas, niggas was getting money, but at the same time, niggas wanted to do something, do something else. You know what I'm saying? But everybody ain't rap though. Everybody wanted talented, at, like, you know, artist wise. So my big brother, them, you know what I'm saying? Free Wavy, you know what I'm saying? He was like, shit, we're going to put some of the check behind Lil Bro, Lil Bro go crazy. And he he really own what he talking about. So they got me over here in Atlanta with them. You know what I'm saying? I think you had came to the spot before in M West. When we were staying in M West. Sure. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? So that was like my beginning. You know what I'm saying? I came here with some made niggas and then like I just ain't never leave. You know what I'm saying? Like Atlanta like my second home. You know what I'm saying? As far as everything go with industry and you know what I'm saying? All that, you know? They like my second home, so. And my early memories of you is, of course, rocking with, like, Black and Duct Tape. And black like, stamped me in the city. Yeah. Black <laughs> and nah, Shawty Low. Black and Shawty Low, that's what I was going to say. No facts. Nah, yeah. I facts. can't, listen, I can't, I can't heal, I can't heal with the fam, but I'm saying, between Black and Alley from, from, from Zone 6 to the West Side, Black was one of the niggas that was influential. He always embraced me from day one. So you got to understand, these real family tie, like, this man done been in my hood. I done been in his hood. Sure. He done came down and been in my section, like, all his jury around, all his niggas, I done did the same thing in his section. Like, we brought us at the end of the day, you feel what I'm saying? So, it ain't really on the rap tip with us, you know what I'm saying? Same thing with Shawty Low. I, I would kind of like, didn't want to do the rap, but like I said, my big brother and them were pushing me. They wanted some other ways to get some paper, so they were kind of, they bought all this equipment and put it in the, in the crib that we had just for me, trying to make me, you know what I'm saying, rapping shit. But when I seen Low, God bless the dead, I was like, damn, I might have a chance because it's a real street nigga, you know what I mean? I'm hearing about him and he making good music and he having momentum. So I wanted to work, I wanted to like link with him and do something with him and then we end up making that happen. Went to 2610 on Bankhead, did a song with Low, I Love My Plug. Long Lil Low. Long Lil Low, man. That was like that was like my introduction to the Atlanta rap scene. You know what I mean? Low like blessed me with the feature. And um, you know what I'm saying? I did a tape with you. Well nah, Low put it on on his tape with you, yeah. the on the man. Like, we gotta add one more with you. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like, oh, yeah, you know, so Low Low gave me a blessing by doing that. Like he you know what I mean? We chopped it up outside the music and he saying everything was authentic on my end. So long live low, man. I miss him, man. For real. What 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 part of the game like 
the hustle, like, you know what I'm saying, the street hustle that you, you say you still use in, in the music shit? Man, the part of the street hustle that I still use in the music shit is the aggression. I ain't get nothing, you know what I'm saying, that I got now, you know what I'm saying, from not being aggressive. So, like, with the music shit, I ain't taking no for an answer. Just like, just like in the street, I wasn't taking no for an answer. Y'all niggas getting some money over here. If this shit close to my hood or my session, I want in. The mall I want in, we ain't taking no no for an answer. You know what I'm saying? Fact. Same thing with the industry. Screen, you remember. Like, I can say this shit on camera because we family now. I done called you a couple times. Why crazy. you ain't fucking with me, nigga? <laughs> you fucking with all these other rain, man. Nigga, nigga, put my shit on your tape. <laughs> <laughs> nah, for real. Nah, I'm like, bro, you gotta tell me some music before I can fuck with you. You know bro. what I'm saying? I'm just, <laughs> I'm gonna keep it real. I'm gonna put it out there. Like, yeah. I'm gonna call Scream on, like, man, what's up? You feel me? Eventually. You ain't fuck with my shit, bro. Come on, hey, man, we want like, in. People been on my head, but I... Cut us in or cut it out, man. More shit, man. We want in. <laughs> <laughs> we want in, bro. So you feel like you more 